This is RTV6 News at Noon, working for you. Welcome in here to the news at noon. I'm Lauren Casey, Todd Clausen, working from home this midday. And Todd, I have not gotten outside yet since I walked in the door <laughs> this morning at about four o'clock. So talk to me a little bit about what people can expect as they head outside. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm in my basement and I have no windows down here and it was tough coming from upstairs down here because <laughs> it is so nice out there, Lauren, as we have the sunshine for most of you and temperatures now starting to warm across the area, especially where you have more in the way of sunshine and that's from Indianapolis uh, down to the south. It is a little cooler as you work your way to the north. 53 in Peru right now, 55 in Muncie, but Indianapolis up to 60 degrees. We were in the 30s this morning and here we are sitting at 60 already this noon hour. Uh, we told you on Good Morning Indiana with the sunshine, we would see our temperatures warm very, very quickly. Now it's a little hazy out there. It's actually very dry and the National Weather Service just issued a fire danger warning because we're dry, because the humidity is so low and temperatures are warm. You see a few showers to the north and a little more in the way of cloud cover. So unfortunately for those of you up in the Peru area over towards Muncie, it is running a little bit more cloudy and a little bit cooler, but where the sunshine is out, temperatures should easily get to right around around 70 degrees. The clouds do increase this evening and then overnight tonight, we do bring some rain back into this forecast. And as that comes in, that will obviously lower the fire danger and it also help to lower the, lower the pollen counts, Lauren, across the area. Many people suffering with this tree pollen. We'll talk about that rainfall in just a little bit. All right, Todd, thank you so much. New this midday, we now know the names of two people killed after a car ran off the road and flipped into a creek near Brownsburg. This happened just before 3.45 Tuesday afternoon just off Hendricks County Road on 600 East. Investigators say that 57-year-old David Cascaden and 53-year-old Lisa Grissom of Avon died in the crash. The sheriff's office said the two had been seen by friends less than an hour earlier. Officers say they're still trying to figure out what caused that crash. The latest COVID-19 numbers in Indiana show a drop in both cases and deaths. Whether this is the beginning of a trend remains to be seen, but moments ago the state health department reported 31 new deaths from the virus. That gives Indiana at least 661 deaths so far, but the number of new cases reported was 394. That's continuing a downward trend from the past few days. Governor Holcomb and other state officials will provide an update for all of us at 2.30 this afternoon, and you can watch that briefing live here on RTV6. New this midday, it might be easier for you to vote by mail in the upcoming Indiana primary. There will soon be a new feature where you can request an absentee ballot online without having to mail in the application. The co-director of the Indiana Election Division made this announcement in today's meeting at the Indiana Election Commission. The commission had already approved the measure to let you vote by mail for any reason for the primary that was moved to June 2nd. The link to electronically apply for an absentee ballot should be at the website indianavoters.com by the end of this week. New this midday, Vice President Mike Pence will visit the General Motors plant in Kokomo next week. The plant was one of the first that GM used to begin making ventilators for hospitals as part of the COVID-19 fight. More than 1,000 GM workers who had been furloughed last month were brought back into the plant to make the ventilators in conjunction with a company based in Seattle, Washington. The White House says that Pence's visit to the Kokomo plant will be held next Thursday, April 30th. After the first round of help that was largely gobbled up by bigger companies, more financial assistance for small businesses could soon be on its way. As ABC's Inez Dalla reports, money for the new loans and for hospitals is making its way through Congress, Congress right now. This morning, fresh scattered protests continuing around the nation. The governors of Georgia and South Carolina now beginning to lift restrictions, even as a new NBC News Wall Street Journal poll shows 58% of Americans are more worried about reopening too quickly. Just 32% in that poll fear reopening slowly will harm the economy. This as the Senate unanimously passes a new $484 billion relief package. Unless we get our economy up and running again, there's not any way we can spend enough to continue to prop up the country. The plan aims to pump an additional $310 billion into the Paycheck Protection Program for small business owners like Mary Moore in Atlanta, who's already had to lay off 43 employees. They rely on this business for their livelihoods and I rely on them. But the program drawing criticism after an Associated Press investigation found at least 75 publicly traded companies as well as Harvard University received money from the initiative. Shake Shack now returning the $10 million 
dollars it received after public outcry. We want to make sure this money is available to small businesses that needed people who have invested their entire life savings. This new bill setting aside billions in grants and loans for small companies. Democrats also okay. push to have the bill include additional funding for hospitals and testing. You cannot tell people go out on the streets unless there's adequate testing. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo saying in a meeting Tuesday with President Trump that the president uh, pledged to, to help the states ramp up state testing. New York, we now do on average of about 20,000 tests per day. Our goal is to double the 20,000 to get the 40,000 tests per day. House members have been told to return to Washington on Thursday for a vote on that new relief bill, meaning the president could sign it into law by the end of the week. In Esdell Equitera, ABC News, Washington. Hundreds of thousands of Hoosiers have filed for unemployment as they try to start rebounding from this pandemic. But in addition to this time of financial hardship, it's also been taxing on our mental health. Psychotherapist Megan Devine has been doing these online forums during the stay at home order. And she says she talks to people who are stressing out not only about money, but also about how to pay for health care itself if they lost their health insurance. On top of that, the isolation of staying at home to help curb the spread of the coronavirus is highlighting all of these worries. It's a lot of routine and that is a loss. I don't think that we really recognize um, the grief involved just in a loss of daily routine. And then adding job loss on top of it, it's like if you still had your job to go back to, some of this loss of routine would be easier to manage. Well, Devine says if you know someone who's lost a job, the best way to help them is to offer support and let them talk through their concerns. We know RTV6 is working for you as Indiana starts to prepare for the day when we can safely rebound from this pandemic. So tonight we're hosting a virtual forum with the Department of Workforce Development. It starts at 730 this evening. You can join in on this discussion, ask any questions about getting back to work or making ends meet. It's on the RTV6 Facebook page and the IndieChannel.com. Well, their concerts are on hold, but the Indianapolis Children's Choir is not letting the pandemic keep them from getting together. Though they don't know when they'll be able to perform for a live audience again, their director says the choir has been continuing to hold ver rehearsals virtually for several weeks now. It's, you know, more of a being in a production studio than being on a stage together and, and being able to create together. Um, but at the same time, our singers are still learning, and that's the biggest thing. We want them still learning and growing. Well, right now, the Children's Choir's concerts are postponed until at least June, but they're putting out some virtual content on their Facebook page, so you can find out more about supporting them on their website, ICchoir.org. Well, it's a lot harder to hold a party these days, but you can do it with a little creativity. So next year on the news at noon, how a group of people went out of their way to make a man's birthday really memorable. Our We're Open Indie series continues with a company that could be a bit of help if your home computer is now your home office. All right, Todd. And Lauren, we find ourselves in the right spot right now. We're enjoying sunshine and mild temperatures. We have some rain to the north and then a lot of rainfall down to our south. And that's what heads our way tomorrow. It turns into a pretty wet day across central Indiana. We'll talk all about it coming up in your Storm Team 6 forecast when the news at noon returns right here on RTV6. To be a millionaire tonight on ABC. Welcome back, celebrating a big life moment. The way we normally would, it's not possible right now. Whether it's the birth of a baby, a marriage, even a birthday, we have seen a lot of creativity when it comes to celebrating. Our Kelsey Anderson is joining us now with how a group of people made an Anderson man feel really special on his birthday. A lot of things are looking different right now while we continue to social distance. Even things like birthday parties are now celebrated in a new way. You've probably seen it on social media or even in your own neighborhood. Birthday parades, a way to celebrate and show your love to anyone who might be having a birthday during quarantine. Birthdays that a lot of people won't soon forget. They're huge. It's one of those ones that you'll remember forever, but just because it happened when it happened and how we did it, but we made the best of it, and I thought, I thought it was fabulous. I loved every minute of it. And we want to know what you think about these birthday parades. Do you think they should stick around once we go back to the new normal, or do you think that they'll stay in the era of social distancing? Head over to Twitter and Facebook to weigh in. Working for you, Kelsey Anderson, RTV6.
Kelsey, thank you so much. Well, they can't open just yet, but businesses that are shut down say they are already planning to rebound once they get the green light. Next, we hear from a barber on how he's getting ready to reopen when the governor says it's okay to do so. And here's a live look outside right now on a beautiful Wednesday here. A view from our Weather Now camera on top of the pagoda out of the speedway looking back towards the city skyline. We'll check in with Todd and see just how long the nice weather will last. It's coming up just after the break. Hours for the same flooring? Floors to your home, that too. Indiana's stay-at-home order will continue through May 1st, but Governor Holcomb says that businesses that have closed should start preparing now to safely reopen when Indiana starts to rebound. Our Cameron Riddle shows you how a barber plans to protect workers and clients once his shop is given the all-clear. Inside the Runway Barber and Beauty Lounge, the only thing getting cleaned up is the shop itself. As barber shops and beauty salons have been ordered to close in an effort to slow the spread of coronavirus. No business at all. Uh, we've been closed since March 24th, projected to be reopened May 5th. Jason Lockwood is the owner of the shop on West 38th Street. His projection comes with the hope that the governor allows barber shops to reopen when the current executive order expires. But whether opening day is at the start of May or later, Lockwood is preparing for big business. I project us to be busy as if we didn't close. Uh, the anticipation for haircuts are definitely going to be at an all-time high. With that anticipation comes some nervousness and new precautions. Getting a haircut is an absolute violation of social distancing with a barber and their client inches away from the other's face. Lockwood says cutting hair during a pandemic will bring a number of changes. I'm going to make sure that we have gloves on hand for clients that come in as well as I'm also make sure that we have masks. All my barbers will have masks. Uh, temperatures will be checked as clients come in as well as barbers. And what about those clippers that touch every customer's face? Uh, through this process, we're going to make sure as we're spraying our clippers, we have disinfectant spray. So we're going to make sure the client sees us spray each clipper before we even put it on their head. Just to give them a piece of mind. Barbers will also work in shifts, increasing social distance by using every other chair. Lockwood says customers should feel at ease knowing the staff at Runway are taking their safety seriously. They, they scared enough, trust me. They calling me, asking me questions on a day-to-day -day basis as far as how are we going to move forward with sanitation. So I know they're serious about keeping the place clean. On the west side, Cameron Riddle, RTV6. All right, and Todd, I know you and I used to be on the same haircut rotation. We always got our <laughs> hair done on the same day. That is out the window right now. I think we're all looking forward to some places rebounding and getting back open. But we do have some good news, and that's the forecast you have for us today. Yeah, you know, and today's the day to get out and enjoy. Rain's on the way tomorrow. Today we have mild temperatures and sunshine. It wasn't so mild this morning, though. In fact, below freezing in a couple locations there to the north in Peru as well as Muncie got down to 36 in Indianapolis. But we're all the way up to 60 degrees now here in Indy. So we've already warmed 26 degrees in the matter of just a few hours. So it is a mild afternoon already right at 60 in Indy, 64 in Bloomington, a little cooler to the north where we have just a little more in the way of cloud cover uh, that is present and high temperatures in northern locations. Eventually, you'll get up to right around 67 in uh, the Marion area, 68 in Muncie. As you work your way westward, though, as I'll show you on the satellite radar picture, you get into the sunshine. So highs will be in the 70s in Lafayette, 72 in Greencastle, as well as Seymour, about 71 in Bedford, then in and around the metro area. We are looking at a temperature that'll be right around the 70 degrees for your afternoon high with those partly cloudy skies. Now, here's the satellite radar picture and for those of you in northern locations you are starting to see the clouds already across parts of the area and you see the radar returns on uh, storm team six radar as well the air is really really dry that's probably nothing more than a sprinkle the only difference is for those of you seeing the clouds you will have your temperatures as we just showed you for highs they're just a little bit cooler and then off to our west you notice this big cluster of rain this is going to be heading in our direction as we work our way into the overnight 
night hours. And that's the rainfall that we'll deal with for the day tomorrow. So let me shift over to TrueCast, talk about the future, the timing of this rainfall, and exactly how much we could see in your neighborhood. I think we're dry until late tonight. There could be a few spotty showers that sneak into western communities before midnight, but they would be after sunset. By 4.35 o'clock, rain's overspreading most of central Indiana. By 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, it's pretty wet for almost everybody. The heaviest of this rainfall looks like it's going to stay south of Interstate 70 throughout the morning hours. And then during the afternoon hours, we'll taper the steady rain off to some scattered showers. But the morning is shaping up to be pretty wet across the area. Rainfall totals will range from maybe just a quarter in northern locations. You don't get into the heaviest of the rain to anywhere from about three quarters to an inch in Indianapolis. But the heaviest of the rain, one to two inches of rainfall will be possible across Bloomington as well as the Columbus area. The ground's pretty dry though, so there's no big concern about flooding. And also this rain will help you allergy sufferers out there uh, knocking down the tree pollen, at least briefly here across the area. With the clouds and uh, the rain tomorrow, we are dealing with temperatures that'll be a lot cooler than today. We're only going to be in the mid to upper 50s. We rebound on Friday with sunshine up to 64 degrees, Lauren. So it's a decent day on Friday. And then once we get into the weekend, more rain enters the forecast. As a result of the clouds and the rainfall, temperatures will be a little bit cooler on Saturday and Sunday. As you see, the highs will only be in the 50s, then a little better on Monday. So a very typical spring-like pattern here. We're up and down temperature-wise with numerous opportunities going forward for rainfall. Today, though, is not one of those opportunities. So get out there and enjoy. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Well, many more people are working from home, which means they're relying on technology more than ever. That can cause some problems for those who do not have their own tech consultants. RTV6's Brad Brown found several local businesses that are open and ready to help you. Most of us have had to move everything work and school related to a digital space at home. And if you don't have access to your own IT department, people like Dave Meeker are open and ready. That's how I designed it initially, was bringing technology to you as I would bring the technology to people and help them understand it in creative ways to get some kind of process or improvement in their business or ROI. Based in New Palestine, bringing tech to you is Dave's business that has many of those answers to help navigate what can be a tricky technology-based world right now. I, I would say probably the, for the technology challenge. There you go. That, that grew up with a number two pencil and a, a legal pad in their hand. From basic answers to website development, Dave's worked with many businesses around New Pal and larger companies all over Indiana. What's been kind of the, the most uh, frequent topic that's come up for you over these last three or four weeks? Zoom for one, because people did not know how to set it up. And then, oh my gosh, WebEx followed with a 10 page document on Saturday saying, here's how to stay secure. Yeah. But all these things about cybersecurity I've been promoting for the last five years with two factor authentication, multi factor authentication. From the home office to anywhere, really, tech questions all have answers and people out there to find them. Just find a touchdown space, wherever it is, it hasn't, it's either been here or place downtown or in New Pal, just a touchdown space. I can work anywhere. Yeah. So it really didn't impact me that much, but I can see a lot of other people struggling, particularly with their security. Working for you, Brad Brown, RTV6. All right, Brad, thank you so much. We can tell you RTV6 and the MD Chamber of Commerce have joined forces to protect Indiana businesses. You can find out more about the Chamber's Buy Indy effort and profiles on businesses that are open by going to theindychannel.com slash open. Still ahead here on the news at noon, we'll get one final check of your forecast. Here's a live look downtown. Stick around. We'll be right back. Sticking together while staying apart. And temperatures are warming here across central Indiana quite quickly and with partly cloudy skies, we'll see highs eventually climb into the 70s in Lafayette as well as Terre Haute and the Bloomington area, 67 in Peru, 68 the high temperature in the Muncie area. Your seven day planning forecast brings rain into the area tomorrow. The rain's pretty steady throughout the morning hours on Thursday, then tapers off. And then once we work our way into Friday, partly cloudy, 64 degrees, then cooler with showers and a storms possible. It looks like for Saturday and Sunday, Lauren. All right, Todd, thanks so much. And thank you for joining us and making RGB6 your choice for news. We hope you come back and join us for the news at 5 and have a great afternoon.